This presentation will demonstrate how the Palantir platform can leverage structured and unstructured data sources as we investigate the recently developed Iranian shipping corporate shell structure. All data used in this demonstration is real world and was gathered in late September 2010. In 2008, the U.S. imposed strict sanctions on Iran's principal international shipping organization called the Islamic Republic of Iran Shipping Lines, or ERISL for short, due to its involvement in weapons trafficking. To circumvent these sanctions, ERISL developed a complex corporate shell structure around its ships to mask its continuing shipping activities in spite of the sanctions. According to a recent New York Times investigation, despite the best efforts of the Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control, Iran has stayed one step ahead of the U.S.'s blacklist, spreading confusion throughout both the public and private sectors in the U.S. and abroad. This is clearly a problem, against which an effective analytical platform has yet to be leveraged. In this investigation, we had the following goals. First, identify the key players in the Iranian corporate shell structure through in-depth analysis. Second, track the Iranian fleet geospatially using the map application. And third, apply the knowledge gleaned from earlier in the investigation to a real-world problem. To compile the data we used Kapow, the premier open-source exploitation technology, to import structured data from a number of websites that track international shipping. We then enriched the structured data with unstructured data from the Office of Foreign Assets Control, the New York Times, and other news sources. With this database in place, we'll begin our investigation by doing a quick search for a rizzle and dragging it onto the graph. Next, we'll begin building out the structure by doing a preloaded search around for all of the people and companies linked to a rizzle. Then we can use the Git tool to view any ongoing open source work that we are doing, which will complete a rizzle's hierarchy and allow us to view it in a more manageable way. If we add it to the graph, we now have a rizzle and all of its subordinate entities on the graph ready for analysis. If we zoom in and isolate some of the entities, we can begin to identify key players. For instance, we can see that Nigel Howard Millpass, a British national who is affiliated with Arizal, is the director of 17 Arizal-linked companies. We can also see that Millpass is frequently a co-director with Ahmad Sarkandi, who himself is an Arizal official who's been accused of attempting to illegally import weapons for the Iranian Navy. Based upon this evidence, we can conclude that Milpass and Sarkandi are key players in Arizal's corporate shell structure, and that in the future, any entities hoping to stay in compliance with U.S. sanctions should investigate ships or companies connected to these individuals to determine their legitimacy. To get a better idea of how Arizal distances itself from its vessels, yet still clearly controls them, let's look closer at the case of the Vobster. Looking first at Woking's shipping investments, the first thing that stands out is that Woking is directed by both Millpass and Sarkandi. We can also see that Arizal owns Woking, who in turn is the sole shareholder in the Vobster Shipping Company, who owns the Vobster. Viewing the Vobster's dossier, we can see what it looks like. We can also see that it is a Maltese-flagged cargo vessel, and that it has been placed on the Treasury's SDN or sanctioned entity list. Now let's turn our focus to the vessels in Arisal's fleet. We can bring them up by doing two custom searches around the shell structure we have just mapped. To track them geospatially, we'll drag them onto the map. Now we can see where each of Arisal's vessels is located using data that's updated every 15 minutes. This allows us to monitor things that might interest us, like the frequency with which Iranian vessels visit ports in countries like Syria, North Korea, or Pakistan. Additionally, this will let us establish Iranian shipping patterns, and we can see when sanctioned Iranian ships enter ports in the EU or US. If we want to see where Iran concentrates its maritime trade, we could use the heat map helper. Now we can see that Iran has a close maritime trading relationship with China. Finally, let's try to use this data set that we've created to investigate a real-world problem. 
Recently in Afghanistan, coalition forces discovered an Iranian shipping container filled with weapons. Authorities are not sure how the container made its way into Afghanistan, but one possibility could be via Pakistan's port of Karachi, one of the closest ports to Afghanistan. So this is where we will focus our investigation. As we are investigating possible Rizal-linked weapons trafficking, we can first start by examining past incidents to see if we can find any clues. So I've already brought Arizal back up on the graph. Looking at the selection helper, we can see that Arizal was involved in at least two weapons trafficking incidents. Let's put those on the graph for further analysis. We can see that the October 2009 incident doesn't have very much information. However, the November incident involving the Frank Cop does. Looking at it closer in the dossier, we can see that the Frank Cop attempted to deliver Iranian-made weapons to Syria in support of Hezbollah, but were interdicted by the Israelis. We can also see that the primary means of camouflaging the weapons was hiding them behind bags of Iranian-made polyethylene. Keeping this in mind, let's go on to the next phase of our investigation. Going to the map application, we'll do a radius search on the port of Karachi to see what ships are nearby. Next, let's drag the results onto the graph. If we highlight all of the ships and view their properties in the histogram helper, we can see that one of the ships is on the SDN list. As we look closer at this ship, we can see that it is named the Samin 1 and that it has a number of interesting links which we'll add to the graph. Looking first at its manager, Valfajar Shipping Company, we can see that it is located in Tehran, Iran and affiliated with Arizal. Next we can view what cargo it is carrying as it declared on its import general manifest, which is available online and was ingested in a Palantir using Kapow. If we select all of the cargo, we can see that six originated in Iran. If we drill down further on those pieces of cargo, we can see that they're all pallets of high-grade polyethylene. If you recall, this was the same material that Iran used to camouflage weapons less than one year ago. Of course, the presence of polyethylene does not mean that the Samin 1 is definitely trafficking weapons. However, this coupled with the Rizal's history of weapons trafficking, and the discovery of weapons-laden Iranian shipping containers in Afghanistan definitely makes the Samin 1 a ship of interest. It is important to note that all of the vessels we identified in our investigation have already been flagged by the Treasury Department. However, as Arizal's main strategy in thwarting the U.S. and EU's efforts is to adapt and create confusion by constantly creating new shell companies, registering their companies and ships in different countries, and renaming the ships in its fleet, the complexion of Arizal will continue to evolve. By using Palantir's ability to leverage varied databases and allowing analysts to scale these databases to do in-depth analysis while collaborating with each other, Arizal's tactic of confusing international shipping regulators and corporate participants can be defeated.